Adam, if industrial design were a 30-foot drop on a mountain bike, you would die. That is true. Welcome to Engineer vs. Designer. The podcast. For product designers, engineers, and people who have watched way too many episodes of Mythbusters, my name is Adam, industrial designer of CADJunkie.com. And my name is Josh, mechanical engineer of SolidSmack.com. Each week's show is broken into three gnarly halves. This week we'll be talking uh, about The Edge Factor, a new series about design, engineering, and making manufacturing sexy. Oh, yeah. First, we'll serve up the product design stories from this week's news, courtesy of SolidSmack.com. Followed by techie tips, tricks, and Q&A compliments of CADJunkie.com. And finally, we're going to talk with special guest Jeremy Bout, producer of The Edge Factor and a new design competition called uh, Reality Redesigned. Speaking to us from Underhouse Studios up in the Great White North. He's in Canada. Which is the only reason we could get him on uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Thanks for being on. Producer Jeremy Baird, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. If you were a Tim Hortons donut, which flavor would you be? I would definitely fit into the um, sour cream glazed category. Okay, Jeremy, um, that sounds... Interesting. Stay put. We're going to hear more from you as the show goes on. Josh Mings of SolidSmack.com. Speaking of bad Canadian fast food pastries, delight our fungiform papillae taste receptors with the saccharine cream filling of knowledge. What have you got for us this week? Oh, yes. This week's SolidSmack update is brought to you in 3D modeling Bliss by Siemens PLM. Accelerate design, reuse imported 3D data, and for a limited time, get a free license of Solid Edge when you buy another. Check it out at Siemens.com slash PLM slash BOGO. Big news in the 3D printing world this week. 3D Systems continues their consumption of 3D print-related businesses. Gobble, 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 gobble. This time, it's printer manufacturer Z Corp, creators of the first full-color 3D printer. This is part of a larger acquisition of Z Corp's sister company, Vidar Systems. Total price 3D Systems will pay for both is $137 million. Kind of a big deal. And T-Spines 3.3 will be released this month with a hot new reverse engineering tool. Uh, This new tool allows you to fit T-spline surfaces to your scanned data, creating an editable unified watertight surface. The geometry is lightweight and fast. News of the uh, release should hit tsplines.com real soon. Very cool. UK policymakers and industry execs are bent on ridding the world of the perception that Britain doesn't make anything in a new campaign aimed at highlighting the wonders of UK manufacturing. The Make It in Great Britain campaign, championed by William Butler Adams from Brompton Bicycles, Michael Ryan of Bombardier Aerospace, and many others, will host a national competition to find cutting-edge products in Great Britain and feature innovative pieces of UK manufacturing in an exhibition at the Science Museum later next year. That is a lot of words, Josh. Tommy Erlington is a sculptor creating animals, birds, and marine life from recycled materials and scrap. You'll see his work in sculpture parks at uh, hubcapcreatures.com. Definitely recommend checking that out. Cool. Adobe is uh, rolling out six new photo editing design-centric apps for Android iPhone coming later. So exciting. New Tech is releasing LightWave 11 with camera matching and ZBrush support. Mm -hmm. And next week, Autodesk University will hit Las Vegas where we're sure to find out more about their PLM venture and how it relates to media and manufacturing. So, Jeremy Boot, producer of The Edge Factor, show at edgefactor.com. What do you think about the UK's attempts to get rid of this perception that they don't make anything? I mean, is, is that even true? Well, yeah, interesting. Uh, I mean, I think it's great that they're, uh, they're talking about it. I think in some ways it's, it can be counterproductive to talk like that simply from the standpoint that, yes, a lot of manufacturing isn't being done in the UK or, uh, for that matter, here in uh, Canada States, not like it used to be, but there's still a tremendous amount going on. And uh, it's part of the problem, the perception. You know, people are thinking that it's not here. Um, and, and in some ways that deepens the problem because it's invisible then to them. Mm. You're kind of reaffirming, you're reaffirming the stereotype in a way. Yeah, you're reaffirming yeah. the stereotype. And, uh, you know, so, so a, lot of, a lot of kids aren't going into manufacturing because they're hearing that it doesn't exist. And, uh, and that's a serious problem. In fact, perhaps one of the biggest problems that uh, some of these big aviation uh, aerospace companies are mm. facing today. Yeah, I mean, you hear about this catch-22 where apparently there are, there are uh, you know, fewer and fewer manufacturing jobs, so we're told, and yet manufacturers are having trouble finding enough qualified people to do the work. 
that they already that they do have. Exactly. Exactly right. Uh, it seems much more effective to work with I don't know uh, uh, media or people that are in, already involved in manufacturing to to make it more uh, relevant to bring more uh, attention to it in the schools and uh, and, and the media outlets. Kind of like what you're we're, what you're doing already, Jeremy. Well, and it's why we're doing it. Um, yeah. You know, because movies really uh, movies, television, media, you know, the web. These are the influences of today's culture. And uh, you got to if if you want to influence people, you got to speak their language, and uh, and that's what we're attempting to do with uh, with our product. You know, there's some really awesome stuff going on, and we we want to put it in a form and a format that uh, is palatable. Well, all this talk of manufacturing has made this oil-soaked sack of aluminum shavings look even more delicious than before. Adam O'Hearn of CatJunkie.com. The doughy lumps of flour in our skull cavities longs to be firmed up by the yeast of your knowledge. What have you got for us this week? This week's Cat Junkie Q&A is brought to you by Siemens PLM Solid Edge. Synchronous technology brings constraint-driven and history-free modeling together, making product design a breeze. Buy a seat of Solid Edge right now and get another one for free. Uh, do it at Siemens.com slash PLM slash BOGO. Since we're talking with Jeremy Bout uh, of the Edge Factor show at edgefactor.com, I thought we could uh, talk a little bit about the process behind putting together a show like his. I know a lot of people are curious. Um, I, I, in particular, am. Uh, first, that you know, there's you have to have the idea for the show, but then there's the story, writing the story, and doing the research and the scripting and coordinating guests and the camera crew and the equipment and the sponsors and shooting permits and logging shots and blah blah blah. And I mean, that's not to mention uh, everything that has to happen in post once it's all shot. So, I mean, how does this process start for you and how do you keep track of everything? This is, this is just, as, this is way more complicated than designing a product. This is nuts. Insanity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I feel tired just hearing that list. Um, <laughs> that is, that is my life. Um, indeed. It does require, I mean, to do something on the scale that we're doing, it does require a good team. Um, but the reality of today's age is that you end up wearing a lot of hats. Back in the day, or even still in some cases, you know, broadcast uh, television, you've got a huge crew, everybody wears their hat, you're in a union, and don't cross the line. Lines are very blurry in independent filmmaking. So you wear a lot of hats and do a lot of projects. Um, so as producer, exec producer, and host of this show, a lot of what you just uh, talked about, you know, sits on my shoulders. Um, but I do have a fantastic team. Um, you know, got an award-winning director. He helps uh, pretty much shape what you see unfolding on the screen. But as you pointed out, that's really a small portion of, uh, you know, pulling something like this together. The great thing about Edge Factor is we're hitting on a topic, though, that people are really excited about. So, so to be honest with you, the story, I mean, you, you talk about selecting the story. Man, that is not a problem. We have stories coming from us from all over the world, um, and, and we have the pick of the, of the best ones. I mean, I mentioned I said Lockheed Martin, the F-35 last week. They're coming to us with that. You know, they want us to uh, to talk about wow. that. Talk about the Mars rover. You know, been to NASA, been w with the company that did most of the. I mean, w all of these are incredible stories. And uh, but they all come to us. So that makes the job a little bit easier from that standpoint. I mean, it's it's so interesting what what we always do on the show. And I sound like a broken record, but what we always try to do is get people that straddle the lines between engineering and design. And you're kind of doing that in in an interesting way, in two different interesting ways, in my mind. One, I mean, you're you're doing a show about engineering, design, and manufacturing, and so kind of you know looking at all of those things at once. But also, in a way, you know, like you, you mentioned earlier, your show is a product. Your show is your product. And there is both kind of a, a soft, gushy design side of it, and there's a very cold, hard engineering side of it as well. And as producer and, uh, and host, uh, you know, you're, you're definitely also walking, walking like right down the middle of that line as well. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I mean, you, you talk about how do we select for it. It's probably the biggest thing that, that we want to show is that a good design um, builds a good story. And, um, you know, so, so unless, you know, unless there is really, um, a, you know, a need for something and then somebody steps up and designs it, um, it's such a, that's just in and of itself a very fascinating thing to be part of. And so we're always looking for that. It's, it's where technology and, and design meet the human side of the story. That's probably one of the biggest criteria for us. And, 
Um, and that's the challenge for us is to sort of walk both those lines uh, when, when we're producing these things. So, how, I mean, how does the process start? You said you have, you have stories coming to you. Somebody comes to you, Lockheed Martin comes to you and says, hey, we want to we wanna do this. Uh, we, we want you to, to showcase our stuff. Um, then, you know, how, how do you go about, uh, how do you go about going from there? You know, I'm not even sure there's a formula for that. Um, at, at this point, you know, not getting too far ahead of ourselves in the discussion, but at this point, Edge Factor is, is doing more than just a show. We, you know, we want to create that big sort of cinematic story that, you know, you got tingles watching. Then we want to create a, uh, a reality show. So I'm not even sure it's the right term for it because we're doing it in a way that's never really been done, but uh, a reality show that tracks a design contest, but it's all revolving around the same theme of that big show. And then give, uh, give designers the inside scoop on, you know what, it does start with a great idea, but that's just the beginning. Uh, you know, then track some of these ideas all the way through from design through to rapid prototyping into the manufacturing world, but then the, the testing of the physical product with a, with a pro rider at the end. Just from a technical, like just logistical standpoint, that sounds like a nightmare. You know, you, I'm sure you're going to have just uh, hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours of footage to deal with and to log and to, to hang on to while you put together the show. It, it just uh, sounds like a pretty overwhelming undertaking. It is. It is. Uh, reality redesigns less so than uh, um, Edge Factor, the show itself. Um, yeah, it is because um, it's a, you know reality shows are raw. They're they, you know they're not meant to um, you know one camera, two camera angles tops for a given scene. Whereas you know when we shot our first Edge Factor production, we're shooting in 3D. We 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 literally had four to six camera angles uh, for for some of those locations and four to six 3d camera angles. 3d camera wow. angles so suddenly wow. you start thinking about post-production on that and that's that's where <laughs> that's where the, mm -hmm. the director and his team became invaluable because you know as producer and host of this thing i'm worrying about many things uh i can't be thinking about that and, and that's why you have to have such a great team around you yeah well how many episodes do you how often do you do an episode uh we were doing two a year um we are really in the baby stages of this thing, though, because it's only mm -hmm. been a year and a half. Uh, so, so we produced three in the first, more or less, 12-month uh, season. We are working currently on um, a once-a-year major production, uh, so mm -hmm. more of a documentary style. And out of that then comes a whole series of products. So you've got a reality show that comes out of it. You've got the big cinematic production. You've got a reality show that students can get involved with around the world. And then, um, simultaneous to shooting the episode, we actually have a whole educational video series being shot that go into curriculums uh, for schools, and we're literally developing that right now from the gnarly metal episode, and uh, and hope to be pushing that into schools uh, around North America in uh, over the next few months. Jeremy Bout, streams of smoke are shooting out my nipples and ears. That is amazing. I don't know how you handle it all. <laughs> And uh, welcome back. Today we're chatting with Jeremy Boot, producer of the Edge Factor show at edgefactor.com. We brought him on because both the Edge Factor and the Reality Redesign Contest deal with engineering and design in a very direct way and uh, are attempting to inspire young people to enter into design, engineering, and manufacturing in North America and abroad. Indeed, Jeremy, we have some questions for you. And we promise not to steal any of your ideas, fingers crossed. <laughs> be careful, we'll steal them. How did you get to know uh, you wanted to be a producer, Jeremy, and uh, how, did, how did you get started with that? Oh, whew. you know, uh, the, the, the term producer kind of shocked me when I first heard it, but I guess I realized that that's what I was. Uh, I got into media because I always loved music. Uh, had a recording studio kind of in my basement that started as a bit of a joke and ended up starting to have bands in it. Uh, then ultimately ended up getting into video and kind of never looked back. So for, for me, it was a gradual progression from sort of the design slash manufacturing world into media and that was ultimately how I came up with the idea for Edge Factor because it was, it was my kind of living my life, just, 
You know, people don't get how things are made anymore. People don't realize that this is an amazing field. There's, you know, cool robotics, cool machines. There's all this, this great software. And, and, uh, and so when I became a producer, I realized, you know what? I, I've got a unique perspective. I think I could do something with this. And uh, it's been pretty crazy since. So I guess you had this manufacturing uh, in the back of your head. What drew you back to it? Um, just, just the, 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 never lost my love for the, for making things, I guess. Um, there's nice. really something cool about being presented with a problem, seeing the solution in your head, designing it in 3d, and then actually physically coming up with the solution personally. And, and I had that because I was, I was a high performance cutting tool manufacturer. So I, I literally got to work with race teams you know, companies in, in aerospace, medical fields, and, and we literally would be presented with, with the drawings and we would have to come up with these high-performance cutting tools. So really enjoyed that, but I lo- ended up loving media more. So for me, I got to actually end up doing both uh, wow. with, with this, which is really cool. That, that is really cool. And uh, what's also really cool is that the show, or at least uh, the most recent show, is focused on that in particular. Yeah, it's, uh, it's mountain biking um, specifically um, slope style mountain biking, which is again, just like all of the stories that they come to us. I had a, I had a company come to me and say, you really, you want to reach youth. And that, and that was really our focus. We knew after the Chilean mine rescue story that we wanted our next one to be something that would communicate with, with our younger audience. In many ways, looking back, it was the perfect choice simply because we, we hit a vein with it that we, we didn't realize going in that, that it would resound like this with, with the younger audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah the the footage in this is is really intense. Uh, what's the most challenging part uh, of shooting this, and what's your favorite part of putting a, a show together? Wow, the most challenging is logistics for sure. Um, you know, because it only takes. Uh, we, we've had a limited budget. You know, we've had some some great sponsors step up, but we're always trying to take what we get and do a great job with it. And and so it, it's kind of like you don't have any room for a, a major catastrophic failure. And that's probably the number one concern is, uh, is when we go out and shoot, you know, weather, flash equipment. Um, some of these things are pretty, you know, one-time shots and uh, you got to get your money shot. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges is, is with a low budget, uh, working through some of those challenges. Definitely the most rewarding is uh, hearing, hearing a teacher talk about the response in the classroom. That's, that's probably cause, cause that is the goal. And then to hear that, that we've, we've done what we set out to do. That's, uh, I mean, it's always great to watch the production too, but I'm so warped by the end of it, almost sick of it. So I never actually get to enjoy our own productions. Do, do you have uh, any examples you could share with us of things that, that uh, teachers have told you that, that kids have said? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had, for example, I got a call a few weeks ago, um, from a guy that uh, said our local state here is, is running a, I didn't even know anything about this. He says, we're, they're running a competition on radio saying, um, show edge factor gnarly metal in your classroom. And, uh, and then tomorrow at two, the first 50 kids to call in, will get free t-shirts. Wow. And, um, it was so cool to see them leveraging what we had done, yeah. um, for, for, to promote themselves and to promote manufacturing. Hmm. And, um, I've had, number of teachers come to me and say, I just wanted you to know that I had a young person come up to me this morning and they said, we're changing our major to manufacturing because they had watched Edge Factor the day before. Wow. That's so, got to feel good. Yeah, it does. It does. It, that, I mean, that's, that I think demonstrates that this mechanism, this, this approach using media to communicate um, that it works. Jeremy, having you on the show has been even better than the time I ran my bike into the curb and dive bombed into the flower bed on purpose. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, guys. All right. If you would like to send a spare bike parts to EVD HQ, please address them to Josh. And if you'd like to spend spare Barbie parts, please address those to Josh as well. Engineer vs. Designer appreciates your comments. If you listen to the show and you like it, hate it, or whatever, head over to engineerversdesigner.com and let it rip. Insults are always welcome. And if you want to see us reenact scenes from The Machinist, 
Be sure to like us, plus one us, follow us, or whatever else, as social media has been correlated with weight loss and hallucinations. The show was edited by Simon Martin. Our theme music is by Ross Hartman. We'll see you next week, and remember, without engineers, designers would be silly storybook to illustrators. And without designers, storybooks would be all about spherical trigonometry and steampunk. I like steampunk. You would. <laughs> <laughs>